Hi there. Welcome in. Here's a thought. Reconciliation is a journey, not a destination. Carrie Newman. Well, we leave this month of May today with a mixture of feelings. There's hope, but there's also heaviness, a sense of sadness that sits within me and many more of us across our land with the news of the horrible discoveries to some, not revelations, but proof of the previously undisclosed or unconfirmed deaths of hundreds of children at the Kamloops Indian Residential School, as it was named at the time, Canada's largest in lower central mainland BC. Now, no matter what part of this land you call home, this has likely been a weekend of heavy hearts, of questions and demands for answers, of prayers up and calls for reparations. I thought many times over the past few days of an hour I spent on a stage near here as part of an arts festival. I interviewed a beautiful and gifted man named Carrie Newman, who is of the Kwok Wakiwaka Coast Salish and Settler Heritage, and whose father was a residential school survivor. Mr. Newman is a sculptor, artist, opera singer, who created the Witness Blanket. Have you heard of this? It's not a literal blanket, but it is an indelible display. Carrie spent a year logging 200,000 kilometers and talking with some 10,000 people in 80 communities who had attended the residential schools or had family who did. He took with him their stories along with 887 items, some as intimate as cutoff braids, straps for disciplining, hockey skates, and even handwritten letters. Now together, these pieces of our darkest era as a country and a people are strikingly mounted alongside actual floorboards, tiles, clocks, bricks, toys from the schools on 13 wood panels, eight feet tall and 40 feet long. As a whole, I can tell you it is breathtaking to bear witness to in person, but each element of it, large and small, offers a piece of the story detailing the immense atrocities and immeasurable tolls of the era of the residential schools, which housed some 150,000 Indigenous children, many snatched away from their parents, families, communities from 1870 to 1996. Carrie Newman lives near us on Vancouver Island and is a professor at UVic. He told me that his own father spoke little of his time in the schools, but carried the emotional scars for his entire life, wounds that Carrie began to understand on a deeper level as he created the witness blanket, this moving display. And I mean that in both ways, both of the heart, soul, and mind, and physically crossing the country, is currently housed in the Canadian Museum of Human Rights in Winnipeg, where it's undergoing conservation after logging so many kilometers, enlightening and reminding us of the system that robbed so many families of so much. Just go to witnessblanket.ca or Google The Witness Blanket. And there's also a documentary titled Picking Up the Pieces, The Making of the Witness Blanket. It's free online, so you too may bear witness. And the link is in my written journal. But if you do watch, please do so with care and read and listen to the call for a connection to get support if you or your family members have a history with residential schools. What we already know is horrific. What we will learn is apt to be more so. The fact that many of these children were buried without last names, some not recorded at all. Their parents denied the cold comfort of having their children's bodies returned to them or even knowing of their fates is unforgivable and our hearts ache. 